March the 29th day already already of August 2023 I'm going to be your host tonight known as Dana Durnford Dion Dana Durnford welcome to a world ruled by one industry known as the nuclear industry which captured your planet about 80 years ago and has throttled humanity in the 8 million species ever since. I'm going to cover Fukushima nuclear meltdown, radioactive news. I used to do it live. There was a day when you were free enough to have a live stream. But some innovative hacker, hackers at YouTube have circumvented the realities of everybody else and segregated me. So we're going to talk about the news cycle today and a few other things. Uh, uh, so there's four reactors that went down in Japan. That's reactor three behind me and reactor four. Now they're completely destroyed. This is what's left. That's three over there, rather, and this is four. And if you stack them on top of each other, they're not as tall as that piece up there. And that is the bottom frame, that piece here, of a full building, which is reactor one, when they were going to put a Kevlar sarcophagus around it. So there's actually nothing left to reactor three. What did you decide to do was build this contraption and convince you that there was, but there really isn't. And the reactor cores and fuel pools will be at the top of the buildings. And top of the buildings now have covered the planet for 12 years in radioactive fallout, modeled based on 20 to 30 days of fallout. Reactor 4 in Japan had that same attribute. So they're very visual, and I have a tendency to show you that almost exclusively. But reactor 1 and 2 had the same issue but they don't look the same way. They lost their entire inventories, which is approximately six decades reactor cores in that fuel pool and six reactor cores in that fuel pool. And Chernobyl was tiny compared to these reactors. These reactors are pure uranium, pure, pure plutonium. So there's nothing left to the building. So what they decided to do is the same as reactor three. They built some kind of contraption off-site and installed it and then rolled out the notorious propaganda machines to convince you it looked like that instead of what it actually does. So it's very alarming because the, way, the only way they can get away with that story was the entire medias and universities worldwide had to convince you too. So the radioactive fallout has covered the planet. This is 80 years of fallout. And it's actual global warming because think of a snowstorm if it, after 19 days like this here, the whole planet is covered in snow. And But instead, of, that never melts, never goes away, and it's a continuous snowstorm forever after, after 19.5 days, 468 hours. So think of snowflakes as radiation, physical atom, and that atom is pulsing energy in every direction every second almost at the speed of light and so think of a snowstorm instead of being cold the more snow you had the hotter it got and because you can't get rid of radiation you can't destroy it and um, it lives for millions of years it pulses energy every second it's a problem your media has reveled in manipulating you to the point where it's hard to comprehend what I told you is the actual truth. The science behind the Fukushima waste water release. <clears throat> this was fun. A lot of fun stories today. And scaffolding you see there is indicative of construction, not of a finished product. And everyone you see it's scaffolding, so they rushed it together for some pictures. It doesn't function though. Tanks are actually empty, and because the buildings are long gone, right? The buildings are actually gone. By the way, consider subscribing, liking, clicking the notification bell. 
because I'm apparently barred for life from doing live shows on YouTube, the world's biggest platform, where I'm not accused of doing anything wrong. I don't have any strikes against my account. The nuclear industry had the ability to just stop me from live streaming. Um, should worry the daylight set of you. The United Nations Atomic Regulator said the water will have no... The UN's Atomic Regulatory Agency, United Nations. And so when you talk about these subjects, they don't even show you the documentation. Causing reactor cores to overheat, have a nice day. But when you look at the actual documentation, it's not a nice day or a nice future, right? Causing reactor cores to overheat and contaminate water. Well, it covered the whole planet. I showed you those little models a few moments ago. Within the facility, and you're not joining the stream, basically. You might be, though, because from now on, you're going to look for the video in, not under live, like you normally would do, but under video. And it's going to show up as a premiere, and it should have comments. And it should have uh, polls, except the show won't be completely live. It'll be a few hours old, maybe. And uh, it'll still have the same attributes. So a lot of people who watch my shows later instead of live, nothing is basically changed for them. <clears throat> the facility with highly radioactive material that magically turns to sawdust when TEPCO touches it. Japan says it needs the land occupied by the tanks, but it's going to take 30 or 40 years to dump the, the water. <laughs> With a green light from the International Atomic Energy Agency, but they're not a regulatory agency. We cover that all the time. The entire process will take 30 years, but if it's going to take 30 years, then you need to get other land, right? You need the land occupied by the tanks to build new facilities. Well, you, if you're going to wait until the water is gone, you've got to wait for 30, 40, 50 years, according to you. Of course, we know better the buildings are actually destroyed. Their version of the story is not that. Their story is nothing got out. Don't worry, it'll get easier as we get through this. The problem is being caused by a radioactive element called tritium. Well, no, it's not caused by tritium. It's caused by reactor cores that are missing. And uh, each reactor core was 100 times the amount of uranium plutonium that three, um, Chernobyl had. Chernobyl was really, really bad. These are catastrophic to every species. So tritium. The problem is tritium. But it's not. The pro you're not putting tritium in tanks. So originally the tanks were built to pump water up from wells that were drilled on the site to gauge the radiation that was flowing into the Pacific because you couldn't contain it, see? But in 2015, that's at the Paris Accord, that story changed, and allegedly all the water they were pouring on the reactor cores, which is equal to a garden hose, split four ways, but it's 140 tons a day. So imagine 140 tons a day, which is a garden hose, split four ways. So one quarter of the garden hose is pumped on 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Another reactor core is pumped deep into the earth on top of another reactor core. Well, these reactor cores, a lot of it is, was you know, released into the environment as particulates, as um, radioactive fallout. And, and the plumes covered the entire planet. Let me reinforce some of that for you. So reactor 3 to your left, it detonated. And that's a 190-foot building right there. So that's a big detonation. That's the reactor core and the fuel pools. The plume bottom model is 27 days after the buildings are disappeared. There's nothing left to them. But reactor one lost its fuel pool into the environment, but its reactor core, some of it burnt into the environment, but a lot of it went down into the earth into the China syndrome. That's why the buildings are still standing 
And same thing with reactor two. The fuel pool and the reactor core burnt continuously for days and then it went down to the earth where it hit the water tables. The earth split open in multiple places and in six places the steam coming out of the ground was a lethal dose of 10 sievers per hour. And so that's forever. Tritium, uh, the problem is tritium, which is not. It's uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium. There's an, a brutal amount, for instance. So the theory was everything was going into the tanks, but the reality of it was it covered the entire planet, and they produced a cover-up story that I explained to you at the beginning. Tritium can be found in water all over the world. Actually, there was one scientist claiming that every time you had a tear drop in your eye, it was a trillion tritium atoms there. I thought, I, and that was a Japanese uh, professor. I said to myself, my God, boy. Just say it's like a banana, but don't do stuff like that. Don't be evil like James Smith. How many times have we covered this Portsmouth University public relations? It's, it's not a university, it's a public relations firm for the military-industrial complexes and nuclear industry. You can't call that a university. After all the lies we've seen from them, they're the furthest thing from a university. He's a professor in environment and geological science, but he spends a, a large amount each year of producing serious, brutal propaganda, hideous, that one would hope would be legal to lie uh, in the context of these people. These are deadly lies, and there are consequences for the lies. This is not a victimless, a victimless crime of when they lie. It's, it's 100% uh, catastrophic to the victims in a way. And here's James Smith saying you can drink the water, really, you can drink the water from the meltdowns, but you can't because that's a lethal dose, right? But a physicist David Bailey runs a French laboratory. I really can't find anybody in France that I can say, well, that's reasonable. I can't find a single one or anywhere else. The physicist David Bailey runs a French laboratory measuring radioactivity. You can imagine what that creature is going to be like. The key thing is how much tritium. So what they're, they're all framing the narrative around this fictional isotope of tritium when we're actually talking about meltdowns. And it was really shocking. This started about seven weeks ago. And bless everybody. The protests, you are really special people. Unfortunately, they're protesting tritium, which is what the industry wants them to do. But thank good, at least they got a moral compass. They don't understand the picture because of people like James Smith and Sean Burney. With Greenpeace, he's the nuclear, he's a specialist too, 100%. You know where he used to work? He used to work at Donneray in England or Scotland. And Sean Burney. Uh, Donneray, by the way, will be contaminated for the next 315 years or so. Not that we'll be around to see if it's cleaned up by then. That's his legacy, a nuclear wasteland in a country that don't even have nuclear power. <clears throat> Traditional female divers in South Korea, the Heyo, tells the BBC they're anxious. Now, I butchered the name, I know, sue me. Now I feel it's unsafe to dive in. Uh, well, you're talking about tritium. How about if you knew about what was really happening? Would you feel safe then over the last 12 years? You know why your children died and your loved ones and you're, you're sick all the time or weak and lethargic? And so the industry is so insane. They're actually claiming that they're pumping water through the reactors at the rate of a quarter garden hose each, and then sucking up that water, every drop of it, filtering it is so clean, you can grow fish in it. That's their, uh, like, halibut and flounders. This is a... 
They're not doing that for something to do. They're not doing that because they're bored. They're not, right? There's other examples of that kind of madness where they go through. That's a pretty big thing for a cover story, right? Was not. They had the world media pretend they were in a building that don't exist. Try that one on. You think you can trust the media? Print out that picture and put it on the wall so you can walk down and look at it once in a while and say, oh, that's right. I can't trust a university or a media on the planet, can I? So at least you're playing with a full deck instead of being delusional thinking you can trust the media. Fishermen have told the BBC they fear their reputation. <laughs> so I like to meet that person, show him a picture, and ask him to explain that assertion. Your reputation is genocide, and it's not a reputation. Urge them to assist, assist the science. Yeah, let's have a look at some science here. Are they in the building to the left, 100 feet above it, or not? If the science says they're in a building to the left, 100 feet above it, then that's what they're talking about. If the science says they're not in the buildings, then that's what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about. Act of terror. So Korea's divisions deepen over Fukushima water dump. It is an act of terrorism. That's the Democratic Party of South Korea, I believe. Because that was the 26th, that story. So, and we didn't get to it because well, we'll get to it later. Act of terror, t -t terror, South Korea's division. Well, if this is, this is an act of terror, pretending you're in a building that don't exist, you're not doing that because it's harmless. You're not doing it on a whim or a lark. You're doing it because you're exceptionally evil. Al Jazeera, are fears about the release of Fukushima radioactive water justified? Of course, they'd cut your throat. They revel in that stuff. They drink the tears of the victims and they rejoice in it. Tritium. So, tritium is found in nuclear plants. Where do you think the story is going? So, they show you these pictures. This is really interesting. So this picture is actually a fake picture. This, this is there again. That's really unusual for, for me to see him use that picture. That's from this one. The Americans have 70 reactors exactly like that right there. So that's probably where they shot those videos. And that's not all that done this. Most of the media worldwide either regurgitated that narrative or went there, or not went there, but produced the same narrative where they claimed they were in a building to the left, a nuclear meltdown of reactor 4 and 100 feet above it. So officially, nothing got out of that building. And there's the proof, right? But it's not. That's the actual proof. And they're doing it because it's a planet killer. <clears throat> it's a planet killer. So you get the whole world media and every university, because they got away with it, there's no limits anymore, right? Well, we got away with Fukushima. Nothing else is going to be as bad as that. So screw, screw, let's screw every species, every human on the planet in 12 years. Gargle, gargle, gargle. Oh, I'm busted up. Fukushima water release, scientists consider low levels of tritium safe. Let me show you this picture. That fuel pool, by the way, um, when it was active, whatever reactor that might be, it ain't Fukushima, but there's a lot of those exact duplicate reactors worldwide. So the fuel pools are full of reactor cores. Let's say there's six reactor cores there because you don't have a repository anywhere on the planet to store it. And the dry casts are still not up to snuff, right? Okay, so that fuel pool boils off about 120,000 liters each day. And this is why the majority of these plants are surrounded by farms. Because each liter is going to have hundreds of trillions of atoms of uranium and plutonium, not tritium, but you, tritium will always be there. 
but it's the last one you're worried about. And, and, you, and you actually do need to worry about this very nasty isotope. But you, you better worry about the real stuff, the actual fuel rods. Because when you talk about tritium, they're pretending the fuel rods don't exist. And so the only way you can talk about tritium is to say there is no reactor cores in the fuel pools. And then you would talk about tritium. Because eventually, or actually that's not true too. If you put fuel in there and take it out, it's still going to be saturated with absurd isotopes, particularly curium, which is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods. So the fuel pool is like that, 120,000 liters back into it because it's going to boil that off into the environment. There's no containment, as you can see. Because the, the, the reactor cores, and there could be six of them there, and that would be power for six million people. And that's the same atoms is going to be splitting, and there's no containment anymore. You see how evil this actually is? So think of an invisible snowstorm that covers the planet. Each of these will do that each day. And so it's very hard to perceive it. You can't sense it naturally. You can't see it or smell it. So it's unbelievably dishonest to portray it as uh, tritium. And to put that picture there, which is the fake picture of reactor four, is dishonesty on a, on a pretty different level. That's, it's pretty dishonest to use the picture that they use to manipulate everybody on that particular reactor. They actually done similar with reactor three. We blasted them for six days straight during their public relation campaign, and they disappeared for about two years, and then they came out and announced all the fuel was out of the pool of Reactor 3, which doesn't even exist, like Reactor 4 doesn't exist. So they rolled out the monsters. Now, this guy here said each eye drop was equal, you know, like each tear in your eye would have a, tr a trillion tritium isotopes well it might be because of fukushima and 80 years of nuclear but um i don't know critics say more studies and how releases could affect marine life and humans are required but he was a vicious disgusting and so was she she was with the norwegian institute of air research and her lies were hideous. Oh my goodness. They're, that was ruthless. And she took, and look at the blouse she chose to wear as a nuclear expert for the, the European Institute. What the hell is the name of that? I'm just looking for one of their models. Give me a second, I might find it. It's, um, it's absurd. It's the Norwegian Institute for Air Research. And I, and I know what... Uh, here it is. There's a few of these models. Which is, I already showed you that one. Let me use another one. This is uh, the Norwegian Institute for Air Research of the Xenon 133 releases. Uh, and this is just a very short time. Top one is 20 days. And again, like it eventually covers the whole planet, right? All the models, because these models are short-lived models. Yeah, the Norwegian Radiation Nuclear Safety Authority. She's the director. And so if you can't trust her, what's, and, and similar for every country, the people that are in that position are the ones that are currently out here uh, skewing the, the real narrative. You can tell that's what she looks like all the time, really. That's that's. As soon as I seen that that look, you know that look, right? Where they're gonna set you on fire if you turn your back on them. That's that look there. And not capable of smiling, eh? That these types of people. There's a whole bunch of chromosomes missing in these people. But what she was saying was completely, every sentence was dishonest, and it was said with unbelievable contempt, trying to sell the, the narrative of tritium, 
So every conversation we're seeing, they're talking trivial. So it's pretty humiliating. It's almost like I woke up on a different planet and, and everything was evil when it comes to media and academics and scientists and journalists. This is what we've seen day after day, uh, week and month and year after year, nonstop. And it's symmetrical, too, throughout the entire planet. And it's, it's, it's with malicious content that they, they, like they're content doing it, you know what I mean? Massive sunspots seen by the RARS, Mar, RARS, what the hell is a RARS, Dana? But a Mars rover may disrupt satellites and cover the Earth with auroras. Cover the Earth. I don't know if I've ever heard that before. Cover the Earth with auroras. If anybody ever wanted to see the Northern Lights, yeah, it's your unlucky day, apparently. Me, big man, Thursday. Uh. A team of suspects from NASA has recently spotted a colossal sunspot predicted to expand and shift until it directly faces Earth in the next coming weeks. My take on it is I think uh, next week will show up. And we're, we're going to get hit with a serious. Uh, solar beam, not solar beam, but um, a high frequency radiation, corona mass ejections, solar plasma eruption. A powerful one is coming our way next week. And I've done a little bit of uh, digging into that. And it looks like, don't take my word on it, but apparently this is the. This is a real event we got coming next week. The types of eruptions have the potential, so they can take out all the nuclear power plants if you get the wrong ones eh? at the one time. Imagine in just two or three days, every nuclear power plant on the planet melting down. That's a, that's a possibility if they're running when this, and you get one of these creatures coming through. So they use that. So it was really interesting that they're using the Mars rover to look at the sun, and you don't really hear that that version very often. So there's an alternative for putting it. So why don't they put a one of these on the moon? Well, we already been to the moon, Dan. We're sick of it, really. Why are you going back then? Because you haven't been there in the first place, most likely. Making sunspot monitoring far more crucial than mere scientific curiosity, because you can, you can melt down grids with these things, and we're not set up to handle it. We can't absorb a hit. While the exact dimensions of the sunspot remain uncertain, it was NASA's Perseverance rover captured the imagery, a staggering distance of over 152 million miles away from the sun. So. Um, They put it there specifically to do that, I bet you. And then being on Mars was used just to fund the operation. and Because and, they want you to go to Mars so you can be fertilizer for their fields later when you finally figure it out. Perseverance can see approaching sunspots more than a week before we do. Consider this your one-week warning. A big sunspot is coming. And that can influence, apparently these things can influence earthquakes. They can influence um, volcanoes. They can influence uh, tidal uh, pools. There's all kinds of adverse side effects besides. And you can really damage your containment of your planet with this uh, energy we're talking about. But you can melt all the nuclear power plants. If you do strong x-rays that uh, affect the upper atmosphere and potentially disrupt the radio signals. If, if you look up nuclear testing, atmospheric, high atmospheric nuclear testing, there's, a, there's quite a few videos. 
And for a long time, I would just, a night time or in the mornings, I would watch him or listen to him over and over and over. With me, a lot of this, I got to listen to it 10, 15, 20 times to get to some of the logistics of what they're actually, because, um, Like good speakers, I'm talking about, right? Good lecturers, they're very difficult to find, unfortunately. You're not going to find them at Harvard or Yale or Stanford or Oxford or MIT because only the degenerate scum can be a professor there from what we see. High doses of the solar energetic particles from a corona event pose a threat to astronauts outside of Earth's protective magnosphere. And that's the reason why the space station is not deep space. Eh? Government orders new power plants to carefully consider water intake safety. Water intake. National Nuclear Safety Administration, NASA, has urged China's newly built and projected nuclear power plants to fully consider water intake issues in a bid to ensure the safe operation of a nuclear disease factory. And as everybody knows, nuclear power plants are disease factories, right? And environment over the year. Oh, really? Hmm. Well, let me challenge that because... A CC-137 plume forecast for North America and Europe up to March 24th, which is France's government, IRSN. Uh, radiation, what was the date on that one? March 19, 2011. August 17, 2014, it came out. This was one of the models that were dug up from France and what turns out to be accurate. Radiation levels, U.S. West Coast spiked, spiked. Not, this is not a prediction. This is a spike. This is documented. A million to 10 million times what they consider global fallout, cesium levels pre, um, pre-extinction level event of Fukushima. CC-137 immediately damaged the heart muscles of humans. What does it do to birds and insects and animals and mammals and children? Or wrecks them, Dana. Oh, that's right. So from a million, so it's spiked from a million to ten, so they've seen up to ten million times uh, what it was previously. So you're talking 30 or 40 million Beckwells, and that's a cubic meter we're talking about. Yeah, per cubic meter. Hey, what did the peanut farm bring us today? Uh, Japan, Japanese ministries eat Fukushima fish to show it's safe after the Fukushima wastewater is discharged. Wow. Holy smoke, Ruiz. That's amazing. You're so brave. We should all give a Japanese a hug and tell them it's not their fault they killed all the species on the planet with radioactive fallout. Maybe we'll start up a campaign, hug a Japanese, hung a ja hug a Jap. Keep it nice and simple. Like, it's not, not meant to be offensive. I'm not trying to belittle the little bastards. But hug a Jap, right? That, that'd be a good campaign. We can even sell T-shirts. Charlie's T-shirt, uh, Charlie... Uh, Calm down, Charlie's T-shirts. We officially sold 107. Way to go, calm down, Charlie. You're a star, man. You little piece of shit. You're a star. Japan's prime minister, uh, they go through these things like uh, hot chocolates, eh? They're irrelevant, apparently. They even kill them on the side of the road sometimes for something to do. And three cat like they did with Shinzo Abe, which, by the way, I never get tired of that video. It always cheers me up. What the hell is up with that? Have eaten Fukushima fish at a lunch meeting in an effort to show the fish is safe. Like, literally, that's got to be one of the 
stupidest, literally the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Well, wait again. This is nuclear. But that, that's pretty stupid. That's a whole new level of what the frig was going through your mind, dog. Just, that's what surprised me sometimes is... And like the average person in the nuclear industry is not stupid. Just hang on, I'm trying to get up. The average person in the nuclear industry is actually not stupid. They're heartless and soulless and, and vicious and demonic and sadistic and twisted. But they're not stupid. Incredibly articulated murder is a scary murderer, right? Let me see, what, what are we talking about here? They're going to eat the fish. Okay, let me talk about fish. Oh, I could have it. I got me some. Hang on. Yeah, that's... Uh... Give me a second. We'll gather up a few of these. It's nuclear. Wow. La, 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 la. Okay, I can't do too much. Let's do that. 15. If once you see it, you never go back. Um, the alarming reality at Fukushima, acknowledged in 2013, was that the plant was faced with a new crisis daily, and TEPCO is clearly, which is not a decommissioned authority, it has no, no experience, and they're in charge of the meltdown instead of all the universities. How come the International Atomic Energy Agency never went there for 12 years? How come nobody went there for 12 years? So enraged, the Japanese doctor was so enraged by the response of the government. Fukushima children's rashes, nosebleeds, diary, fatigue was blamed on radiation phobia mothers. So it was a crime to be educated in Japan, apparently. There's been a melt through, and there's cracks, cracks, cracks. There been cracks. Someone has been cracks. Here we go. I just want to, when you hear stuff like that, nothing, so do you see any cracks? I don't see any. It looks pretty good to me, but maybe your eyesight is better than mine. Do you see any cracks in those buildings? So enraged by the response, a uh, cracks, we already done that. Humans to be affected, what's killing the sea lions in California? It'll be sad if it's because of the Fukushima. Well, how can it not be Fukushima? So let's be honest, because that's fun, right? It's like a novelty if you're a scientist, with being honest. Fukushima radioactive fodder, by the way, is global warming. Invisible plume pulsing energy every second covered the entire planet. And it's killing off the regulatory of the planet at the same time. You know, the biggest byproduct, or the biggest producer of oxygen is the phytoplankton, is the basis of the food chain, the basis of the oxygen chain, the basis of the carbon sequestration chain. What do you think happens when you kill that off? Because we've done that. Look at it. By the way, Neptunium-239 decays to Plutonium-239. Fukushima follows spiked a year after 311. Well, this model is based on 20 days. So apparently it was a lot worse a year later. In other words, it never stopped. And even if it stopped after 20 days, that never went away. That's forever. You got a plume. You, you can't breed without breeding in radiation. It's the worst case scenario for every species on the planet. And lying down and playing dead is not a... F not a way forward. CNN shows diagram of nuclear material leaking, leaking from reactors. And to be fair, you're talking about 2011. Um, so here's what it looked like in 2011. 
Can you notice anything leaking? Not me. I don't see nothing leaking down. There's nothing leaking, Dana. What are you like? Why are you why are you talking like that for? I don't see leaking leaking. I screwed that up already. Not really. Let's go this way. Damn you! Hang on. My God, what have I got done now? I wonder. Yeah, I got no idea what I got done, but apparently I got it done. I don't know. I don't know what I got done there. I, I was supposed to be able to zoom in on it, right? I'll fix that. Some other time, more appropriate. Oh, I had it on. Uh, there we go. We're back to where we're supposed to be. I screwed that up pretty good. Let's keep it rolling. CNN shows a diagram of nuclear material leaking. You know, what about the real pictures? Why not use them? Crisis of epic proportion to California sea lions suffering abscesses, seizures. Sounds like sushi to me, man. You're Japanese, apparently. That's cool. Shellfish gone near damaged nuclear plants. Likely an extinct because of Fukushima. They'll say Fukushima didn't hurt the, f the hairs and flies testicles. Dead sea lions everywhere. Fukushima. Manatees are diving in droves on both coasts of Florida. Pelicans, turtles, dolphins, deaths increasing. Scientists fear it's the beginning of a devastating ecosystem collapse. 2013. Federal government declares a rare, unusual mortality event, and then they just kept making more and more for every species. Unusual mortality events for gray whales. Unusual mortality events for humpback whales. Unusual mortality events for killer whales. Unusual mortality events for mussels. Untold, unusual mortality event. The crabs are just, just disappeared. Billion, eight billion crabs just disappeared from Alaska. I got somewhere else fishing there. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Physician reports increased cancers around nuclear sites, birth defects, stillbirths, spontaneous abortions on the rise, while the fuel pools are hemorrhaging radiation into the environment all the time. So for the cover story to work, what they decided to do was go out and uh, get their picture taken, videos, eating some flounders, and octopus, and sea bass. They're just living it up, eh? Cut off the Fukushima coast, no less, served with vegetables and fruits and rice from, you guessed it, Fukushima Prefecture. That's, that's so evil, man. you so evil. Oh, my goodness. Not easy, no, you probably don't go. The release of the treated wastewater into the ocean, which began Thursday, is expected to continue for decades. Did I mention the buildings are, don't even exist anymore? So to suggest that all the radiation is in the tanks, it's so dishonest, it's hard to comprehend it if you're not familiar. But if you look at the picture I just showed you, hopefully... The lunch showed a Kushida. Some says is a lizard. Strong commitment to take the leadership in tackling reputational damage. Reputational damage. Oh, yeah. You saw evil. Reputational damage. Radiation went everywhere but Japan, apparently. It's important to show safety based on scientific evidence. Uh-huh. How do you win that argument? 
scientific evidence, Dana. So their narrative is that didn't happen. So the only way their story works is if you pretend that didn't happen. And you are making a serious life-altering mistake if you do that. Japanese ministers eat Fukushima fish. I guarantee it wasn't for Fukushima. There's zero possibility of eating that fish. Based on scientific evidence. So they're saying there's no radiation on tritium because nothing got out of the buildings. I, I don't know. I can't see how radiation ever got out of the buildings myself, so maybe they got a point. I don't know. It's important to show safety based on scientific evidence. Not, not facts, but evidence, Dana. Oh, in South Korea, President, uh, former prosecutor, Cook Job, who's almost one year in office now, also ate fish for lunch. And the first day in office, he got his picture taken at the local nuclear plant, canceled a phase of nuclear, and then Trump did it a renaissance. So the South Korean president ate fish for lunch. Whose little bitch is he, I wonder? He's Japan's little bitch, that fella. Demands have fallen due to concerns about the impact of the release. Demands is 86%. In other words, 100% of the population. You can't have 86% and the other 14 are in denial. You can have 14 worried and the other 86 in denial, but you can't have it the other way. Imagine you're in a room with seven people and you're the only one who thinks it's safe. Do you think you're going to win that argument? And, and are you going to base your argument on facts? Or are you going to base it on what really happened? There's actually two different versions of it. <laughs> Both of them are frightening. Stone throwers target the Japs' embassy, consulates, and schools in China. Hmm. Can't say I blame you. You've probably seen my uh, pictures like that, sir. So. Imagine what they're going to do, though, if they see that picture. Imagine a billion people going after the nuclear industry in the morning if that story popped. He also hinted at the possibility of taking the case to the World Trade Organization, known as United Nations, known as the military-industrial complex, the 195 militaries. They also have UNICEF uh, to jack the orphans that are left behind. And there's millions of them and millions of orphans. Just in nine years, they created five million orphans in Afghanistan to get 10,000 Taliban. Did you hear what I told you? They created five million orphans in Afghanistan, not, not counting Iraq, but just Afghanistan. It was close to 6 million, actually, but we'll downplay. We'll say 5 million to get 10,000 Taliban. Do you know how many Taliban they got? Very few of them. You know how many people died? Millions to get 10,000 Taliban. That United Nations. Then they done the same thing in Iraq and Libya. And then 300 Taliban went to... Syria. So they said, well, we'll flatten that. We'll wipe that out. We'll, we'll flatten the homes of 7 million people. And so they did. And they moved them all over the world, right? You can never go back, you know? And then a hundred of them, Taliban, broke off and went to Africa and became Boko Haram. So they went down there and there's millions dead and millions missing and millions in refugee camps and millions unaccounted for and millions of orphans to get the remaining 100 Taliban who had morphed into 10,000 um, Boko Haram. And Syria was 300 Taliban and morphed into 10,000 ISIL. And in Palestine, there's 10,000 Hamas. And, then, and before all of this, there was 10,000 Mujahideen. And no patterns there, is there? And they go and destroy the entire country. And you know who won the war? Monsanto. So 
So the Tuchter case, South Korea was taken to the World Trade Organization by Japan in, I believe it was 2016, because they wouldn't import the food from the nuclear wasteland. Despite the fact they're one of the biggest producers, importers of food from Japan since the meltdowns. And it's um, like a half a billion pounds or something. So the World Trade Organization, like United Na like IAEA, or ONSCLEAR, or IRPA, or the ICPP, or just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, and UNICEF and everything else, is United Nations. They actually run the planet. They are, they, dare I say it, the kings and queens of the planet. And they have destroyed everybody's future. They have co-opted the sovereignty of every country. And they have put people in powerful positions in every country. And they rule by deceit and dishonesty and deception, not by consent or referendums or voting or democratic processes. Thousands of crank calls from China target the Japs in Fukushima Prefecture's offices and the genocidal nuclear plant operator, which was nationalized and has since been run by the government because it went bankrupt. Someone yells stupid. Oh my God. Have you, you should hear what I hear. I can't even live stream on YouTube anymore. Everybody else can. I didn't, YouTube didn't ban me, somebody else did. Somebody in the nuclear industry. And it coincided with the releases. It happened the same day as the releases started, the, the alleged releases from, built, from empty tanks. Like, there is no filtration system. The tanks were just meant to manipulate you. And so I'm going to do a premiere. I'm going to end the show right there, and hopefully we'll get a full show in the morning. I think folks have a great night, and we'll see everybody on the next one.